It's really hard to be looking at the night sky here. And there's so much light pollution. The moon isn't out, but you can't see anything at all. We've got this amazing telescope. Let's take a look. What? That's right. We're supposed to be looking through a digital camera. There's so many amazing things that you could see in the night sky. What are we going to choose? I know. The James Webb Space Telescope just released a new photo of the pillars of creation. Let's check that out. And go to... Ooh, this is exciting. I love the sound of it slewing. Okay, and let's see what we have. It's really dark. We have to stretch it. Now we just have stars and noise. Let's just zoom in one to one. This is just terrible. If we have this amazing telescope and camera and all of our pictures just look like noise and there's like nothing in there, how are we supposed to see anything cool? Let's find out. Wow. All right, so let's talk about the most important technique in revealing details in very dark or dim objects. Stacking. Let's talk about stacks. I've taken a photo and added noise to it. We're going to call the perfectly clean photo our original graphic or OG layer. If we zoom into this image, we can see that that noise is terrible. We cannot distinguish anything here. In fact, we have to kind of zoom out and squint our eyes to see that some of these pixels are a little bit darker and some of them are a little bit lighter. Our goal will be to reduce all of that noise and preserve any of the real detail that belongs there. Let's use a noise reduction filter and we can see some of the details coming through, but this is ugly. This is ugly. This is, this is not usable. Nobody wants to see this. We are just blurring the heck out of this. We got some detail, but it's not enough. Let's undo that. So for this next demonstration, what I've done is copied the OG layer a bunch of times and added random noise to it each time. If we combine all the copies of this image and look at the average value of each pixel, the random noise is going to generally average out. The original values of the OG layer are going to stay in place because they were exactly the same in every copy. There's already a lot of detail, but it's going to take a ton more frames to bring out even more. At this point, we're maximizing how much detail we can recover and adding a few finishing touches we have a really good product. Compare that to our OG photo and we actually got really close. And look at where we started with just a single frame. So hopefully you can see how powerful this technique is to bring out faint details that are just buried behind a ton of noise. Take a look at this demonstration posted by somebody on Reddit. Hell me, hell me too. You can see that each of the individual frames are very noisy and it just looks like static. But if you stack all of these frames, you end up with a very clear image of the Dumbbell Nebula. So what does it look like when you wanna take gorgeous photos of deep sky objects using this stacking process. So let's take a look at some individual subframes that all have the same exposures, but that random noise that's different in each one that can eventually be removed by the stacking process. Here we're looking at sulfur data for the pillars of creation. And you can see that maybe those famous pillars here are present in the sulfur data, but there's lots of noise. That's the grain that we see here in this photo. So after several nights of shooting sulfur data, we had over a hundred frames and this is what it looks like when they're all stacked together. You can see that the noise is much improved and we've revealed a lot of details that we weren't able to see on any single frame. So not only is the amount of noise reduced, 
but now you can start to see some of the very faint details that used to be obscured by the noise. We can look at oxygen data in the same way. This is so, so noisy. You could barely even make out any of the light here. But once the oxygen is stacked, look at it. You can see that the amount of light coming from here in the center is so much brighter than it was before. There is still some noise in the darker areas, but that can be cleaned up in here. Oh my gosh, the hydrogen, hydrogen data looks like this. And just a subframe, looking this bright with this much detail, you know the stack is gonna look amazing. And here is the hydrogen data stack so bright, there's so much nebulosity, so much faint detail. This is really amazing. All that's left is to assign the black and white data to different colors and add a few finishing touches. And this is what we have.